We're going to turn now to I Team 8's investigation into the floor of fire that took the lives of four girls and the chase for answers we've been following. Tonight is our final installment. There are new reactions and newly uncovered details that paint a picture of the arson case, those involved, and the investigation, all of it in ways that have never been reported before. My story has not changed. Galen Rose talking with I Team 8, the first interview she's done in years. That town and that house took my kids away. Sharing with us her questions about the night that her girls died in a house fire in Flora. I went from hearing them to nodding. It was eventually ruled an arson, and now she is asking pointed questions, wanting to know if the deaths had to happen. They're just out of the blue. They were here and then they're gone, and I just don't have no understanding to it. In the aftermath of the fire and in its burned out remains, investigators discovered a smoke detector that they say had not been functioning correctly. Rose is asking if her girls could have made it out alive if that smoke detector had been working. Did potential conflicts of interest get in the way of the investigation? Did small town politics play a role? And where does that case stand now? We've combed through documents from lawsuits and other records talking to Rose about all of it as she talked oftentimes through tears. Some days I just don't want to do that. I just, I just be want my babies back. A new wrinkle we've uncovered, this letter addressed to Rose and her attorneys. Here it is, this is dated um, July 19th, 2019. Okay, okay, thanks. In it, state police say they want to talk to her to get more information about the fire, saying it's related to whom she commonly associates with. There's also a promise of immunity from criminal prosecution offered by Carroll County's prosecutor related to Rose's alleged illegal drug activity. That activity, Rose admits, had been smoking marijuana from time to time, including the night of the fire. Investigators did find evidence of what they call a marijuana cigarette inside her bedroom. They thought that I was selling drugs. They thought you were selling drugs? Yeah. Did they say that? Yeah, they didn't directly say it, but it was rumors. State police were saying, you come talk to us, it'll help the investigation. People might look at that and think you're hiding something. I'm not hiding anything. I will talk to them. I have. I've came to that conclusion, but it's just been no communication. But. Don't ask me some intrusion questions that does not have anything to do with the fire. Like, We took that information to Indiana State Police, asking them if they still wanted to speak with Rose and if the offer of immunity still stood. The response, only that they are willing to speak with anyone who may have information. At the time the letter was written, the Carroll County prosecutor was Nicholas McClellan, who is also that county's prosecutor now. On the question of immunity, state police directed our question to his office. His office did not respond to our request. Rose's friend, Kathy Clendenning, says that's a theme. This case is just a secret. Try to get some information. I dare you. Information gathering made difficult with changes of key people handling the investigation. We just can't find the point of origin and the ignition source. In November 2016, the state fire marshal's office said the cause of the fire was undetermined. However, in January 2017, investigators at the Indiana Department of Homeland Security said the fire had been set intentionally. We are investigating it as an arson. In 2016, Flora's fire department was being run by Adam Randall, the son of Dennis Randall, a key fire investigator at the state fire marshal's office. Within a year of the fire, a new state police detective had taken over the police investigation. Dennis Randall had resigned his position at the state fire marshal's office after questions about his handling of the case. To a certain extent, the fact they've not been solved has affected my decision. And the Carroll County prosecutor, Robert Ives, had retired. Adam Randall had also resigned as Flora's fire chief. Adam Randall's boss before his resignation had been Josh Ayers, the president of the Flora Town Council and the owner and landlord of the home where Rose lived. The town's current fire chief declined to talk with us when contacted. Do you believe the investigation began the right way and do you believe it's still being conducted the right way? I don't believe the investigation started the right way. I don't think they investigated it properly. 
The private investigator hired by Rose and another hired by attorneys for the landlord offer differing opinions as to whether Rose had enough time to get herself and her girls to safety had a smoke alarm inside been working. Rose's investigator concludes there had been enough time. A defense investigator concludes there wasn't. And among the shuffle of pages in a separate lawsuit, documents reveal an insurance policy on the home taken out just months before the fire worth nearly $393,000 and a home appraisal value of $45,000. Most people would apply logic to say that there's some impropriety here. We showed the documents to Indiana University professor of finance, Joe Fitter. He immediately pointed out the dates on each document the insurance policy originally written August 31st of 2016. The appraisal dated 10 days later, September 10th. A little over two months later, November 21st, the home had gone up in flames. The policy was actually written before the appraisal was conducted. A lot of times when policies are initially written, they're written based on a verbal conversation with the property owner. Um, they're not validated beyond maybe what's in a computer system or what's online, what's available from Zillow. It's only subsequently that maybe an insurance adjuster or writer would go to the property and physically look at the property. Up to $392,000 for a house that was appraised at $45,000. Correct. You're saying that's quite odd. It's quite unusual. When an insurance policy starts to look like a lottery ticket, suspicion can be raised. Insurance fraud. Our investigation was hindered at various points as well. We did ask state police for an interview to talk about the investigation. They declined our invitation to speak on camera and said instead that the investigation is active. We asked them for dash camera video showing the response to the fire that we absolutely know exists and has been released elsewhere. State police denied that request as well, citing the open investigation. We also reached out to Carroll County's current sheriff who also declined our invitation to interview.